floor going against Mike Boyd of the Mountaineers. Boyd's a sophomore from Orange, New Jersey. The foul his first. West Virginia is usually in a zone on the underneath out of bounds. The matchup out of it, but it's basically a 2 3 zone. Anton Brown, the point guard number 11. This is Tony Barbie, 22. And the turnover. Pass was intercepted. And that's a three by Leonard Short. Offensive rebound by Preverius Green just off the bench. Another three off the mark. Cleared by Barbie McCoy. Elliot Philadelphia. Will Herndon. William Herndon just elevates. He's only 6'3, but he plays like he's 6'8 or 9. An excellent rebounder. A very strong inside player and a great defensive player. Preverius Green fouled as he took it up. This is what they do best. This is the leading scorer, Jim McCoy, making the pass to William Herndon. And that's what Massachusetts would like to do with every possession if they can. Push it up the floor. Preverius Green started all but three games for West Virginia this year, but he has not started any of the three games in the A-10 tournament. And although he's still averaging in double figures, he has not scored in the last two games, although he's done a good job on the backboards in those first two Atlantic 10 Conference tournament games. And he played very well in the two games against UMass in the regular season. 11-5, Massachusetts. McCoy, the all-time leading scorer at UMass. His shot short, rebounded by Phil Wilson, number 45, who's just come off Dale Catlett's bench. Green, short. Rebounded by Lou Rowe, the freshman wearing 15, who's checked in for UMass. Tony Barbie's baseline jumper. And you see the versatility of the Massachusetts offense. They get it from a lot of different spots. Five starters in double figures. 13 to 5, Massachusetts. That bucket by Barbie was his first of the night. Wilson, a sophomore from Landover, Maryland, gave it up to Boyd. Robinson had it batted away. Will Herndon caused the turnover. He got a hand on the ball. That's a three for Brown. He was just inside the line, Sean, but what an aggressive move by Anton Brown, pushing the ball up the floor and taking the shot off the dribble. It was officially a two-point field goal and another turnover for West Virginia. And the Mountaineers get a much-needed TV timeout. 15-18 to play in the first half. The Minutemen lead by 10. The reviews keep coming in. Hey, look at this Buick story. Buick noses out Lexus. They tell a story about a profound change. And this year's 15 all-new GM cars and trucks. Cadillac Seville won Car of the Year. That's the third major award. Here's one on the Yukon. So what are we planning for next year? This is a great GMC Yukon. To start, a bigger bulletin board. GM putting quality on the road. Dad, we need to talk. I know you don't like Ted, but he's asked me to be his wife. He asked me to be his wife. I'm getting married. Eastern Michigan, the number eight seed. Meanwhile, in the Southeastern Conference, Georgia is up big over Mississippi. Back to Sean and Terry. Thank you, John Saunders, here at the Atlantic 10 Championship. Massachusetts playing on its home floor, and Amherst has a 10 point lead. West Virginia is going to the zone now, Sean. I'm not surprised at this. They've got to do something to sort of back them off. Massachusetts may play tentatively against the zone, or they may attack aggressively. They attack aggressively. <laughs> Indeed, they did. Lou Rowe, the freshman, with his first two and give the nice assist to Harper Williams. Williams showing right off the bat why he was the Atlantic 10 player of the year. 
And Lou Rowe is an outstanding freshman. There's no question about that. Came in against Oklahoma and had 13 points and nine rebounds in the great win over Oklahoma in Springfield. Tipped in, but they'll wave it off. The various green followed up the miss by Shelton, but Jerry Donahue ruled that the ball was still in the cylinder. No bucket. And Gail Catlett is irate about it. Well, he's trying to figure out some way to stem the tide here. He knows that he's got to turn this game around in the next few minutes, or his team is really going to be battling from way behind. West Virginia, the only team to win in this building among the opponents at Curry Hicks Cage this season. Ball turned over and a bad pass by Will Herndon. Leonard for three. He's the best three-point shooter in the league. He missed. No basket. Foul on a follow-up activity called against Ricky Robinson of West Virginia, and that's his second. That's a tough break for West Virginia because that's two baskets they've lost on the last two calls. UMass is the only team in the country that has four 1,000-point scores currently playing for their team. That's a fantastic statistic, and Anton Brown probably would have been a 1,000-point scorer, but he's missed 18 games due to injuries. He's, he's got 838 points or so, so he could have easily been right up there. They could have had five. Jim McCoy. Green battered the rebound out to Robinson. 12-point lead for Massachusetts. Shelton shot too strong. Green's follow also too strong. McCoy collided, and a charge called as he collided with Jeremy Butkin. Good smart play by Botkin to get the basketball back there. Rather than reaching, he just held position and drew the foul. The West Virginia zone has actually been very effective. They gave up the one dunk, but other than that, they've had two turnovers as well as a missed shot and a fast break opportunity. Both teams are deep. And both coaches are substituting liberally here in the opening moments. We just had a shot of Lawrence Pollard, number 32, who has returned. He is the starting small forward. These teams know each other so well, Sean. In the first game, West Virginia was able to get some back doors on that flash post situation they just ran. That time, Massachusetts was obviously well prepared for it. Boy, listen from just inside the line. The rebound cleared by Williams. Jerome Malloy has checked in for UMass. He has the ball now wearing 24. Tony Barbie fouled. And the foul is against West Virginia's Lawrence Pollard. His first. Massachusetts starts three seniors and two juniors, but the interesting thing is the guys they bring off the bench, the first three are all freshmen. You've got to think that John Calipari is preparing these guys for next year. Two of those freshmen, Mike Williams and Lou Rowe, in the opinion of West Virginia coach Gail Cowlett, would start on any other team in the Atlantic 10. Still 17-5 Massachusetts. Anton Brown for three. Gets the bounce. 20-5 UMass. Six points on a pair of three-pointers for Anton Brown. Brown only had one point in the first game here, but UMass lost to West Virginia, so it's important for him to score from the perimeter against that zone. Shelton with a wild shot. Malloy for three. First bucket of the night for Jerome Malloy, the freshman from Waterbury, Connecticut. And the Minutemen have blown it open early. They lead by 18 to 23 to 5. fans here it sounds like 45,000 green quiets them well, green is the guy inside that can help Ricky Robinson develop some some points in the paint that can turn this game around Malloy missed from the other side foul on the rebound for various green picks it up Malloy shoots better from three-point range than he does from two-point range, so it's not unusual. And, of course, he's in there because they'll see him a lot of zone right now, and they want him to take those perimeter shots. First foul on Green. Timeout on the floor. 11.50 to play in the first half. It's Massachusetts by 16. State Farm presents the rules of the game. 
Today we're talking about incidental contact. In this play, the offensive player makes contact with his opponent who falls to the floor. But no foul is called. Why? Today, a woman needs a life insurance plan of her own. Advantage. Rules of the Game has been brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. If this were a perfect world, we'd all be driving expensive cars and living on beachfront property. But in the real world, you have to eat. Well, you can eat tuna once in a while. And you have to buy stuff like socks and shoes and CDs. Well, maybe not so many CDs. Fortunately, the people at Isuzu have to buy stuff, too. That's why they created the Rodeo, a four-wheel drive vehicle you can afford, and why they'll give you a great deal on a sound system and air conditioning. So now, you can buy more stuff. up and it goes they lead Wisconsin now by 10 in the SEC it's over Georgia has defeated Mississippi they get Arkansas in the quarterfinals Sean and Terry thank you John Massachusetts comes into this one with more wins than any other team in the nation at 27 and 4 no matter what happens tonight they are in the NCAA tournament Gail Catlett thinks West Virginia is in no matter what happens here tonight but a win would guarantee it the Mountaineers at 20 and 10. Well, they're still in the bubble, depending on what happens throughout the country, and I know Gail Catlett would like to win this game. Of course, Massachusetts is very focused as well. They've had time to prepare, and they're well prepared to play at home here. Lou Rowe followed up the miss by Tony Barbie. Williams fouled, and he'll go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. Now, Williams gives you a glimpse of why he is the Atlantic 10 Player of the Year. Foul from 16, 17 feet. He still makes the jump shot, goes to the free throw line. This is just a really strong move here. Great concentration on the basket. He takes the bump and still stays with the shot. Williams, a junior from Bridgeport, Connecticut. He was the first UMass player ever to be selected, the Atlantic 10 Player of the Year. He now has 10 of the 26 points, and UMass leads by 19. Leonard just picked up the foul. It was his first. He's in the backcourt now with Boyd, and that's Boyd, along with the jumper, rebounded by Williams. Brown pushes it up. Malloy, nice pass. Rowe rejected, and a goal count. But the players didn't realize it because it's so loud in here, Terry. Well, the problem with every missed opportunity for West Virginia is that it ends up being a basket down at the other end of the floor. Because this team, Massachusetts team, is tremendously aggressive with the basketball when they rebound it. You need to put the ball in the basket and make them take it out to give yourself a chance to get back and play defense. The various green is the player guilty of the goal ten. Boy. West Virginia can't catch a break. That one was half laid down and popped back out. Now, that was great execution. That's the kind of shot you want to get. Now, of course, they're coming off the second half against Temple, in which they shot extremely poorly. And Gail Catlin said, we had great shots. They just wouldn't go in the basket. Blue roll. At the other end, everything's bouncing in for UMass. Roll has six. Mass on a 19-2 run. You almost get the feeling the crowd is helping tip those in if they stay up on the rim long enough. You mentioned the second half of the semifinals against Temple. The three wouldn't fall for Pollard, saved by Boyd to Pollard. Now Bogdan lost it as he started to go up. West Virginia scored only 10 points in the second half of the A-10 semis against Temple, but still won. 44 to 41, the lowest scoring game in A-10 tournament history. Leonard's shot short, rebounded by Rowe. Again, that's a good shot for Chris Leonard. He usually buries that one, but he knows how badly his team needs those points tonight. Foul against West Virginia. It's against Mike Boyd. His second. We hope you'll be tuned to ESPN on Sunday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time for the Women's NCAA Tournament Selection Special. And the Men's Selection Special, Sunday night at 6.30 Eastern Time. And that's an exciting time for everyone, waiting to see who's going to make the field. We mentioned UMass is definitely in 
But they're playing for seeding. In one power rating that came out today, which is very similar to the one that the tournament selection committee uses, UMass was the fifth rated team in that power index. They're 22nd in the AP poll this week. Well, the seedings are tremendously important because once you get past that first round game, you can do a lot of damage. But winning that first game is very difficult, even for the seeded teams. And of course, UMass would like to stay in the East. One of the first round East regional sites is Worcester, Massachusetts, which is only about an hour from the UMass campus. Chris Leonard to Shelton. That is the backcourt now for Gail Catlin. Robinson, left hands one in. 31-9 the score, four points for Ricky Robinson. And a good, good, good execution by West Virginia. They have a panic. The ball just has not gone in the basket for them. Mike Williams into the game for UMass wearing number 10. This is Jim McCoy. And now Williams, the freshman from Hartford, Connecticut. Bar B for three. Every they player can't do anything wrong. That's That's right. Right. Every player, Terry, has that look. Give me the ball. We're all on a roll collectively. Well, you don't want to pick up the ball or dribble on the baseline down there because you're asking for trouble. These guys are very quick. They do a good job of getting into passing lanes and sealing them off. West Virginia is lucky to hang on to the ball there. Lou Rowe got a hand as he went out. And that's Jerome Malloy who has returned for UMass. Caller to inbound. He's on the floor with Robinson, Wilson, Shelton, and Leonard for West Virginia. Bad pass by Shelton. He was lucky it got through to Robinson, and he'll go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. Good job by Robinson coming up with that basketball and then putting it in and going to the line now. West Virginia needs every possible point they can get. John Calipari watched Mike Williams pick up his first foul. And you see the reaction of Massachusetts defense to the penetrating pass. I mean, how many players were around that basketball then, including Mike Williams, the freshman point guard? Robinson converts the three-point play. 34-12, Massachusetts. Under eight and a half to play in the first half. UMass getting some easy shots. That time it's Harper Williams called for the offensive foul. His second personal foul. Good job by West Virginia that time. A half-court trap. Created a quick situation. Did a good job again of staying in position and drawing the charge rather than going for the block shot. Maybe picking up a foul. They end up with the basketball. Wilson nearly had it batted away by Williams. Now Shelton. While shooting by Jerome Malloy. Shelton is very aggressive. He's been in double figures in nine games off the bench this year. You can see why. He looks for his shots. He wiggles in there. Not necessarily a range shooter, but a guy who knows how to score. 32-year-old John Calipari matching wits with the dean of Atlantic 10 coaches, Dale Catlow, in his 14th year as head coach at West Virginia. Williams goes to the bench with two fouls, replaced by Lou Rowe. And at the line, Tracy Shelton. He's battled injuries throughout his career for the Mountaineers. Lloyd back in. Leonard goes to the bench for West Virginia. Shelton, as a sophomore two years ago, averaged 17 points per game, but then had a problem. He broke his left wrist three different times. And this year, he's only averaged just under seven points per game. Finally got the wrist healed and ended up spraining his ankle right as the season started. And has had trouble coming back from that. Williams to Barbie. They're on the floor with Rowe. And that's a shot for three. Well off the mark by Williams. Rowe the follow. He missed. Turned it to McCoy. The others on the floor for Eubanks. This is Pollard laying it in. Strong drive for two for Lawrence Pollard, the sophomore from Brooklyn, New York. His first bucket of the night. McCoy quickly the other way. Handed it off to Rowe. And he was fouled on the way up by Lawrence Pollard. 
But certainly the West Virginia change of defenses when they first went to the zone it took Massachusetts a while to adjust. West Virginia just was not able to take advantage of the offensive end of the floor for themselves. Same thing's true right here although now they're starting to take some advantage of it. When they get the turnover they're taking advantage of it at the other end of the floor. They've gone through a half court trap. They're in the passing lanes as opposed to the matchup defense that they were using earlier. Lou Rowe with seven points and four rebounds off the bench. There's still 7.35 as one and a half. You mentioned he was an outstanding high school player. As you look at Matt Roadcap, who checks in for West Virginia. Rowe was the New Jersey High School Player of the Year last year at Atlantic City High School. He averaged 26 points and 15 rebounds a game in his senior season. He's going to be an outstanding college player. Matt Roadcap that we saw check in is an act. act all academic Atlantic 10 player. 20 point lead for Massachusetts. We're back after this. Why aren't these charts ready? to go but here's news from there Ed Murphy the head coach has just informed his team he is resigning after 224 wins 176 losses over 14 seasons Ed Murphy says he's had enough at Old Miss he's out let's get back to the game thank you John welcome back everyone Massachusetts with a 20 point lead UMass shooting 64 percent from the floor while West Virginia is at only 32 percent and UMass's win at Morgantown in late February the Mountaineers shot 22.9% in the first half and came back in the second half to force overtime before the Minutemen won it. Yeah, I wouldn't count West Virginia out of this game. Again, they have executed very well on most possessions, and they've gotten good shots. They just can't get them to drop. Shelton with the ball. He's joined in the backcourt by Boyd. It's Roadcap, Robinson, and Green across the front line for West Virginia. UMass ball. Terry, how are your play-by-play -play skills? Because I'm starting to lose my voice already yelling over this crowd. And there's seven minutes to go in the first half. Well, it's a great atmosphere for basketball. And, of course, a great home court advantage for Massachusetts as well. It's a good idea to give the team that's worked so hard during the regular season a great chance to win. And that's what this does. Unlike a lot of other universities around the country, UMass has a provision that 75% of the tickets must be allocated to students. And that certainly contributes to the atmosphere in this building. That's an enthusiastic crowd. This is Anton Brown. Now Tony Barbie was very sick after the semifinal win over Rhode Island on Monday night. The team had to wait for him for a while as he gathered himself. Barbie shot one in and out. Boyd leads the Mountaineers on a rear break. He left it behind, but got it back. You can tell West Virginia is not really comfortable with that fast pace. They like to be able to take advantage and play a little faster to get back in the game, but they're just not comfortable. They're not in an offensive rhythm. Later tonight, what a great third game. Arizona and UCLA regular season action at 11.30 Eastern time. An important game in the Pac-10 regular season race, but also an important game in terms of seeding out west in the NCAA tournament. That's exactly right. Both of those teams will be in the NCAA field. The question is, where will they play and who will they play? Terry, West Virginia with 10 points in the second half against Temple. 16 in the first half here tonight. Might there be a carryover when you have a half as they did in the second half against Temple? Absolutely. You know, they're thinking how, they know how important this game is to them. The stakes are very high. They're thinking about that. They know that they need to shoot well. Sometimes you think about it too much. You focus too much on the game, and it looks like that may be the case tonight. Because they're executing. They're getting good shots. They're just not able to get them in the basket. Leonard needs to get on track if West Virginia is going to come back. Foul away from the ball as Roadcap collided with Barbie. 
And it looks like it's going against Barbie. It is. Two fouls on Tony Barbie. West Virginia is capable of creating turnovers themselves. Again, the key is it doesn't matter if you get the possession unless you're able to take advantage of it. They've got to find a way to score points, hopefully here at the free throw line. Road cap, a junior from Millersburg, Pennsylvania. As Jerry mentioned, he's been an Atlantic 10 all academic team selection each of the last two years. He missed the front end of the one and one. That's a great play by Lou Rowe, but what a pass by William Herndon on the baseline drive. That's just great basketball. Good push ahead. Herndon gets the baseline. He knows that he's in trouble. He finds Rowe, and of course Rowe, again, that's a tremendous play inside to make that catch in traffic like that, much less to get it up and have an opportunity for three. Tonight, averaging seven points per game. He has 12 already. The bigger the game, the better he seems to play. I mentioned that he had 13 points and nine rebounds against Oklahoma. He also had 13 points and 10 rebounds against Kentucky. 39 16, Massachusetts. This is the Atlantic 10 championship game from Perry Hips Cage at the campus of the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. John McDonough and Terry Holland, happy to have you with us. Bodkin, well off the mark. What a swarming defense, though. Massachusetts seems to be everywhere. It seems like they've got six players out on the floor if you're a West Virginia fan. Herndon, good skip to McCoy. a lot of floor area to cover as you say they took it to one side skip pass over the top you have to cover from side to side it's difficult to do no matter what defense you're in believe it or not that was the first bucket of the night for UMass's all-time leading scorer Jim McCoy they're routing the Mountaineers without their leading scorer Williams Interesting, interesting thing about this team is they don't seem to care who scores points, and they are very focused on winning the game and not worrying about individual awards. McCoy, long with the three, race to the corner. Great hustle, but was not saved by Harper Williams. It'll be West Virginia ball. Sean, you and I talked earlier today. Jim McCoy has not made a single three-point goal this year. Here's a guy who's a two-guard. He's the leading scorer for his basketball team. He's the first team Atlantic 10 all-conference selection, and yet he hasn't made a three-pointer all year long. That's very unusual. He's a scorer. He's not a shooter. Now 0 for 11 from the three-point line. He made 35 of them as a freshman, but only seven as a sophomore, four as a junior. That's a goal then. Will Herndon guilty of the goal 10. to play in the first half. It's Massachusetts 41 and West Virginia 18. It was just another Saturday afternoon. Until those old guys came out of the woods with axes.
West Virginia down big to UMass. Sean McDonough and Terry Holland. Thank you, John. Ricky Robinson has just scored for West Virginia, the only bucket for the Mountaineers while you were away. Jim McCoy scored two points for Massachusetts on a jumper. And we're at 43-20 UMass with a foul on Tracy Shelton, his second, and he was not pleased with the call. Well, Shelton and Barbie just got tangled up there, and Shelton threw him off, and the ref was right on top of it, so he called a foul on Shelton, and West Virginia had the ball with a great chance to score. And they, they were both pulling on each other, but Shelton's was sort of flagrant the way he threw him to the ground. Tony Barbie makes the first. He was a second team All-Atlantic 10 selection last year as Boyd returns for West Virginia. He did not receive any honors this year, nor did Herndon or Anton Brown. That was all announced just before this Atlantic 10 tournament started, and John Calipari said that served as motivation for those three players in the opening round win over Rutgers. Well, you know it is, but at the same time, you can't put all five players from one <laughs> team on the first team or the second team of the uh, All-Atlantic 10 uh, All-Conference team. Although well, you could make a pretty good argument for the Minutemen. Well, you certainly could tonight. 45-20, Massachusetts. Lawrence Pollard. Bounced it to Leonard. He needs to heat up. Lou Rowe had his hands in the rebound, but it was knocked away by Botkin to Pollard. impressed with the Massachusetts defense. They really swarm inside. They don't give up anything from any position. Jeremy Botkin. Jeremy Botkin with his second bucket of the night. He has four, a junior from Upper Track, West Virginia. Barbie down the lane. Shut off by Leonard. Rowe gave it to McCoy. Even against the press, they use a lot of different guys to handle a basketball. William Herndon who's obviously an inside player, quite often comes up to bring the ball up against the press. Terry, there's no doubt UMass is talented, but it seems obvious watching this first half. They're also extremely well coached. That's three more for Anton Brown. They're very disciplined. They know what they want to do, and they know how they want to play. And while quite often they play very aggressively and almost out of control, it seems, they all know exactly what they're doing. Brown hit the floor, but he's called for the foul as he collided with Bodkin at the top of the key, and that's two fouls on Anton Brown. Jerome Malloy checks back in. Well, the only danger for Mass right now is if they start to get a little bit overconfident and start to take bad shots, and this just doesn't look like the kind of team that's likely to do that. They're very focused on their task right now. There's a minute plus left in the first half. They're up by 26, but they're still playing defense like they played at the start of the game. And, of course, John Calipari is keeping fresh bodies in there, so they physically will be able to do that. Chris Leonard. Only with three points tonight. And again, he's the kind of player that can get hot, Sean. He's had as many as eight three-pointers in one game, seven in another, six. Uh, you know, he's capable of putting points on the board in bunches. Leonard holds every three-point shooting record at West Virginia. Jam missed by McCoy. Leonard wisely let it go out of bounds. It'll be mass ball, or rather West Virginia ball. One oh one left in the half. Forty eight twenty four Massachusetts. The various green shut off by Rose forced it up well off the mark. And a foul on the rebound activity against Lawrence Pollard. That will send Jerome Malloy to the line at the other end. Now, that's just great reaction by the Massachusetts defense. The penetration by Green, they react to it, they seal it, 
when the shot goes up they do a great job of checking out it looked like in the first two games that West Virginia really controlled the backboards but that's definitely not true here tonight they've corrected that problem they're doing an excellent job of maintaining good inside position coming up with the defensive boards and they're also getting on the offensive boards at their end of the floor Jerome Malloy makes the first. He's a freshman from Waterbury, Connecticut. Here comes Roadcap back into the game for the Mountaineers. 39 seconds left in the half, and UMass doesn't line up anybody along the lane. Well, they just want to make sure they don't give up anything easy going the other way. Six-point edge for the Minutemen. Bodkin over roll for two. But Bodkin was playing against two guys. Anton Brown was just sitting there in his lap, daring Mike Ward to shoot the perimeter shot. Boyd forced the steal. Nice outlet pass by Roadcast. And Green lays it in. And now a foul. 93 feet away from the basket by Bodkin. Well, this Barris Green is going to be an outstanding player. You can see he's thin, he floats through the air. He needs open court situations like that, and he's not getting them tonight. He needs to hit the weight so that he can battle two or three guys down there when he needs to. Do you find in your experience that that's common among players who in high school are used to just using their athletic ability, leaping and running? to dominate when they get to college they think they can still do that when in fact they're not strong enough well that's exactly right and i think you know Tavares will be on the will definitely be on the weights this summer i'm sure and he's going to find it he's just going to become a better and better player he's an outstanding player as he is that will add to his game seven points from Malloy off the bench Five seconds to go in the half. Boyd lost it. That's a fitting end of the half for West Virginia. Now they haven't been able to find the handle on it yet. When they have executed, they've gotten good shots, and the shots haven't gone on the goal. A tremendous ovation and well-deserved for the Massachusetts Minutemen as they head to the dressing room, leading this Atlantic 10 championship game by 24 points. 52-28 at the break. Let's rejoin John Saunders. Sean and Terry, UMass, no doubt about it, they are headed to the tournament, and they could win with that big lead right now. Hard to believe that West Virginia won the last time they went up to UMass during the regular season. When we come back, Jim Valvano and I will have scores and highlights from around the rest of championship week.
by 24, which was the halftime margin. Exactly. West Virginia came out, played very well, Sean, in the early goal. Time. Let's rejoin Sean McDonough and Terry Holland. Thank you, John. We knew it was you in the studio. And welcome back, everybody, to the Atlantic 10 Championship game. Each team has scored eight points here in the second half, so it's still Massachusetts by 24, which was the halftime margin. Exactly. West Virginia came out, played very well, Sean, in the early going, scored on four of their first five possessions. But at the other end of the floor, Massachusetts did the same thing. They didn't make up any ground at all. Amazing thing about the first half of Massachusetts speaks to the balance that we spoke of. McCoy had four and Herndon had four, and they still had a 24-point lead at the break. They do. They've got a lot of firepower at a lot of different spots, and they're able to score just about anywhere, inside or outside, and they use different people to do it. Five points now for Will Herndon. West Virginia has still been unable to get Chris Leonard on track. He just doesn't have any room at all. The defense really is all over him. Lawrence Pollard had a block by Malloy, but a foul call by the outside official, Jerry Donahue. But again, there's just no room in the lane. Every time you try to take the ball in there, either on a pass or on the dribble, they do a great job of sealing it down. Arizona and UCLA at 11.30 Eastern time tonight. The third game on ESPN. That's a regular season battle. Important game in the Pac-10. And with NCAA tournament seating implications. Shelton. Rebounded by Rowe. And it's tough to make those shots with somebody flying at you. And it seems like every time you go up to take a shot, a Massachusetts player comes at you, you put it on the floor, you think you've gotten by him, there's somebody else there to take you and seal it. Three team fouls against West Virginia here in the second half. The personal foul was against Tavarius Green, his second. Massachusetts leading 61-36. Massachusetts has the freshman backcourt in now, getting them some experience, and they're playing very well tonight. Mike Williams, number 10, gave it to Jim McCoy. Jerome Malloy, well off the mark from three-point range, rebounded by Green. Shelton, double-teamed and turned it over. Threw it into the arms of Malloy, then Pollard got it back. You think about the pace that Massachusetts played the first half at. You know, just up and down the floor, only six turnovers. That's really a great job. Wilson missed the jam. Then a foul called as Green followed up, followed up the miss. He was fouled by Herndon. Good job by positioning inside. He comes down with it strong, goes back up strong. Just can't quite get there. Just a little bit off balance when he left the floor. How about Hardman's jumping ability, though? <laughs> Couple of leapers involved in that battle, Green and Herndon. The foul was on Mike Williams, his second. If you look at Mike Boyd, who's come back in for West Virginia. Pollard goes out. Ricky Robinson has also come back in for the Mountaineers. Green at 15 in their upset win here at the cage. West Virginia, the only team to win here in the cage against UMass this year. And he had 13 points and 13 rebounds against UMass in the overtime loss in Morgantown. Well, Massachusetts just didn't do much wrong that first half. They shot 60% from the floor. 
John Calipari's Minutemen still comfortably on top. For years, I never even thought about it. I guess I just didn't want to face things. Manning to English, like Tinkers to Evers to Chance. <laughs> uh, baseball not involved, but South Carolina up by three, Sean and Terry. Thank you, John and Jim. Here at the Curry Hicks Cage at Amherst, Massachusetts, UMass in cruise control of the Atlantic 10 Championship, leading 61 38. John Calipari about to take Massachusetts to the NCAA tournament. For the first time since the 1961-62 season, you can see that they've each had the same number of shots. Massachusetts has shot the ball much better than the visitors from Morgan Town. West Virginia's found a little bit of rhythm in this second half, but again, Massachusetts is playing so well, there's just no way to cut them to the lead. They cut it one by playing very well. Michael Williams, and it bounced out. McCoy got a hand on it to bat it to roll. And that's the way the ball is bounced all night long for West Virginia. Terry John Calipari wasn't pleased with his team's intensity in the quarterfinals and semifinals. He said he had played very flat and without any passion, but he thought the home crowd would change that. They certainly did right out of the gate tonight. Well, I'm sure John and his team talked about that, too. And, of course, they were ready to play. The crowd got into the game very early, and it all fell together for them. Had it blocked. And then Jarton dropped it in. Four two. He's had a quiet night. Ricky Robinson, the sophomore from Roselle, New Jersey. Had to sit on the bench last year while playing behind the talent of Chris Brooks, but he's had a chance to play this year and played very well. Well, the block on the first shot was by the freshman Lou Rowe, who had an outstanding first half. 12 points, four rebounds. You can see what kind of player he's going to be. From 15 feet. Harper Williams doesn't shoot it very deep, but he takes good shots and shots he knows he can make, and he puts them in the goal. Wilson, too strong off the glass. Rebounded by Green, who follows with the slam. That's a nice job that time of getting to the boards by Pavarius Green. Lead is 21 for Massachusetts, and Boyd knocked it away from McCoy. Mountaineers trying to make their first run of the night. Shelton knocks it down at 63-44. Still 13-10 to play here at Amherst. West Virginia's in their four-court press now. If they can knock it loose a couple of times, they can make it interesting. Boyd fouled McCoy. Three fouls on Mike Boyd. Good job by McCoy of coming to meet the basketball there. A lot of times players, particularly at this stage of the game, wait on the pass. They're ready to take it toward the basket. He came back to meet it up the line of the pass and ended up creating the foul. Tony Barbee has checked back in for Massachusetts. Here comes Leonard returning along with Bobkin and Pollard for West Virginia. I think Leonard has a tough time getting off shots against the Massachusetts defense unless they can execute, get the ball inside, force him to help out so much, then they can throw it back outside to Chris Leonard. But on the initial passes, he's going to have a tough time getting shots against this kind of defense. By B. The whistle, counts the bucket. He'll go to the line with a chance for three. Well, it bounced around the rim at the other end of the floor for Massachusetts in the first half. Fell in. We thought maybe this rim down here was jinxed the way it was bouncing out for West Virginia, but now that Massachusetts is shooting down here, Tony Barbie up strong, takes a bump, gets the shooter's roll, has a chance at the three-pointer. Lawrence Pollard just drew his fourth foul of the night. Barbie missed. It's only the second miss from the free throw line tonight for Massachusetts, who's not a great free throw shooting team. Robinson dropped it in at the other end. All of a sudden, he's up to 15 points. McCoy collided.
tied it with Bodkin. Offensive foul called against Jim McCoy. Bodkin's done a great job of getting the basketball back for West Virginia by drawing the offensive foul. The only problem with that is they have to take it out of bounds. They'd like to get some turnovers that are in the open court to give them a chance to convert immediately the baskets because they really need to cut in this lead. They've got it down to 19. A three-pointer here all of a sudden at 16. You've got to think Massachusetts might start thinking about it a little bit now. Those shots might be a little tougher to make. Bodkin's been a real bright spot tonight for West Virginia. They haven't had many. Green, tough shot, but got it to fall. That's a fantastic move, and you get a chance to see what kind of player this young man is going to be. Only a sophomore. The lead is dwindled to 17. Anton Brown was fouled. It wouldn't fall. And he was fouled by Tracy Shelton, his third. Well, Brown's a 74% free throw shooter. You've got to probably not foul the shooters in this particular situation if you're West Virginia. You're going to hope they take a jump shot like that, and you want to rebound it and get it going the other way. Brown trying to get the double figures for the seventh time in the last nine games. That one barely scraped the front rim. You can sense just a little bit of uneasiness here in the cage. As the lead has been cut to 17, now 18. With 12-12 to play, it's the Atlantic 10 championship game. And West Virginia's played well this half. Massachusetts just had such a great lead. Green shot short, rebounded and ripped down by Lou Rowe. Again, this young freshman just continues to impress you. They'll miss these seniors, but these three freshmen are going to make them forget about him fairly quickly. McCoy collided with Leonard. Blocking call, no basket. McCoy has such a great first step, and that's exactly what John Calipari was telling us this afternoon he wanted him to do. Catch the ball, turn and face, and then decide what he was going to do rather than putting the ball on the floor too quick. He felt like in the tournament he had been putting the ball down quickly, maybe in a little bit too much of a rush. Except for Rowe, and that cost West Virginia two points as Herndon followed up Rowe's miss. Will Herndon now has seven. The inside players thought it was a two-shot foul. They should have realized since the basket that did not count, it was not a shooting foul. Leonard. What a great job defensively, though. Every time Leonard goes up to shoot, somebody's flying in his face and forcing him to either take a tough shot or to give it up. Shelton's pass is deflected by Herndon to Barbie. Four on one. They were looking for a bit of showtime, but Herndon couldn't catch it in the air. McCoy, long. Herndon, oh, did he go high in the air, but a little bit too early, and Robinson rebounded it. Averius Green. Another acrobatic shot for PG. Those are unbelievable shots. He just hangs in the air, but he keeps his eye on the rim. And you got to feel those are shots he can make. Rowe. He was fouled by Butkin. Good job by Massachusetts of advancing the ball against the pressure. Put it in the middle of the floor and then go to the baseline with it. When you've got the ball in the middle like that, it's awfully tough. The defense has to make a decision. There's no help side. Lou Rowe inside, awful tough. He had 11 points and nine rebounds in only 18 minutes against Rutgers. In the quarterfinals, and he's made the most. Just saw the numbers of his limited playing time here tonight. Good rotation on the foul shot as well. West Virginia started to make a move, but Massachusetts has countered it. The lead is back to 21. So I'm doing my sound check.
His shorts a little too tight, John. <laughs> All right, he knows this one's important later on here at 11.30 on ESPN. Back to Sean and Terry. Thank you. And behalf, on behalf of both of us, a belated happy birthday to Coach Valvano, who turned 46 a couple of days ago. And I envy him because I'm getting ready to turn 50 in April. If you're Chris Leonard, you're a marked man for the Massachusetts defense, and they've just done a marvelous job this whole game. Here you see he's almost got some room, and sure enough, there's somebody there to take it away from him and force him to give up the basketball. 71-50, Massachusetts, as we tick down the midway point of the second half. Massachusetts has never won the Atlantic 10 tournament. West Virginia shot the ball much better in the second half, but it isn't enough. Yeah, they're playing well. I mean, you shoot 50 56 percent on the road. You think you make up some ground here, but it's awfully tough to do because Massachusetts is also playing extremely well. RB rebounded the green miss. Row in the open court lays it in. And this whole team is so good in the open court. And here's a guy off the bench playing well in the open court situations. But that's what they do so well. Rejected by Rowe. Well, Coach Catlett said Lou Rowe, the freshman, could start at any other team in the league except Massachusetts, and I'm a believer. Well, maybe not just in this league, maybe in almost any league. He's going to be an outstanding player. Intercepted by Herndon. Herndon down the lane. Blocked by Wilson. This should be an easy two for Boyd. And it is. Now Wilson has limited playing time, but he's seventh in the league in block shots, so that is his specialty. Malloy lost it on the floor to Pollard. He's called for a travel. Massachusetts ball with 9.05 remaining. And with the Minutemen leading by 21. Shelton returns with Leonard. Boyd goes to the bench. Well, you felt like if West Virginia could just get a couple of baskets, a couple of turnovers while ago when they had it down to 17, that they might could make it interesting. But all of a sudden, Mass has got it back up to 21. They've got the basketball now. We're inside 10 minutes to play. Something good has to happen for West Virginia very quickly. Barbie had it deflected by Wilson. There's another block shot for Phil Wilson. Pollard shoots a three. Five points for Pollard. The lead down to 18 now. Malloy pulls up. Looked like Wilson might have got a piece of that one. He certainly altered that shot. Finally, Malloy tips it in after Rowe got a hand on one. Well, the offensive rebound really hurt there because, again, West Virginia had a chance to come back. Leonard shot the quick three. Herndon rebounded the miss. The lead is 20. Anton Brown down the lane. Five B for two more. And Massachusetts just gives you no quarter. They just keep coming at you. Leonard finally able to knock down a three. Chris Leonard only has seven points tonight. Well, he's worked for those seven, Sean, and they've worked to get in the basketball and scoring position, but the Massachusetts defense has just been concentrating on keeping him from being able to handle it in his scoring area. Certainly the future is bright for West Virginia as well. Leonard, the only senior who plays, Tim McNeely, is the only other senior on the roster, and he's only appeared in nine games. Well, but this team is very strong in the sophomore class, the West Virginia team. Timeout on the floor with 7.43 to play. John Calipari in the Minutemen, inching closer to the A-10 championship. Is business travel a real problem for you and your company? I'm sorry, sir. We can't find your reservation. Our secretary said... This treasure... It's the Atlantic 10 championship game. It's been all Massachusetts throughout. They lead 77 to 58. Tomorrow here on ESPN, it's the ACC quarterfinals. Georgia Tech and Virginia, Maryland and Duke, NC State and Florida State. 
in Wake Forest in North Carolina. It gets started at noon Eastern time. And I know you still have a soft spot in your heart for Virginia, and they're a team on the bubble. Well, they are, and uh, if they win this game, they should be in because they've got some great quality wins. Maybe even without the win, but at 15 and 13, that'd be tough. The question is, will West Virginia get in, and will this apparent drubbing hurt them? When the tournament committee ponders those decisions over the weekend. Well, I think Gail Cameron has to feel good about his team. They've come out in the second half. It would have been very easy for them to, to give a lackluster performance here in the second half. They haven't. They've come out. They've played well. They've played hard. They've had a tough time eating into the lead by very much. They give Massachusetts credit for it. Look what they just do. They run the shot clock down, and then McCoy hits a shot at the buzzer. That came with no time remaining on the shot clock. Green fouled at the other end. Well, last year, the Atlantic 10 had three teams at the NCAA tournament. And in the power index, the RPI that we cited earlier, the one that came out today, the Atlantic 10 was the fifth strongest conference in the nation behind the Big 8, the ACC, the Big 10, and the Great Midwest. And one of the things working in the Atlantic 10's favor, a 71 and 31 record of their league schools against outside competition. Best ever for the Atlantic 10. They won 70% of their games against teams from other leagues. And three and one against the Big Eight. No other conference in the country has over one win against the Big Eight, so that's impressive. UMass was two and zero oh against the Big Eight with wins over Oklahoma and Iowa State. They are definitely going to get in. You'd have to think that the Atlantic 10 will get at least two, and the second team, logically, would be West Virginia. Rhode Island and Temple also teams on the bubble. And Ron Bertovich, the commissioner of the ATM, hopes all four of them will get in. Nice follow there by Green, 4-2. PG has come alive in the second half. He heard the comment that I made about lifting weights. He showed me that he doesn't need to work on the weights. Green now at 16, 11 of those here in the second half. It's 79-61, Massachusetts with six and a half minutes to play. Massachusetts is now using the clock a little bit. They're going to run the shot clock down each time. And the thinking here is that we want to control this game. We want to make sure that we're capable of doing this. They're practicing a little bit is what they're doing for a situation like this later in the, in the NCAA tournament. 16 points now for Harper Williams. The lead back to 20. And there's two more for Mike Boyd. The Massachusetts 22nd in the AP poll this week. As we mentioned, one power index, the fifth rated team in the nation. Mike Williams with the layup for his first bucket of the night. If you went based on 22, you'd think they would probably be a fifth seed, perhaps a four, maybe a six. Kavarius Green drills a three. He's up to 19 points. But they're going to be a tough draw for whichever team is unfortunate enough to get them in the first round. Absolutely. When you've got a team that does as many different things from as many different spots as Massachusetts does, it's hard to prepare for them. And, of course, West Virginia's played them three times now. This, this is being the third time. They've seen a lot of them. The team that plays them in the tournament probably has not seen much of this team, and it would be difficult to prepare for them. To make an argument for a very high seed for UMass, Well, Herndon trying to add to the argument. Massachusetts with more wins than any team in the country, 27, and it's about to be 28. The four teams against which they lost, that shot missed by Green and rebounded by McCoy. The four teams they lost to had a combined record of 76 and 40. The losses were against Kentucky, at Kentucky, West Virginia, George Washington, and Temple. They've had a great season. No two ways about it. This is a quality basketball team and much better probably than 22nd in the country. Leonard with the steal, then he was fouled from behind by Mike Williams. Speaking of the selection process, the women's selection special is Sunday at 12.30 Eastern time, and the men's comes your way Sunday evening at 6.30 Eastern time. The selection committee also looks at how teams are faring heading into the tournament. Are they cold coming in? Are they hot? Well, Massachusetts... As hot as anybody at the moment, they've won 11 in a row, 16 of their last 17. That's another factor that should work in their favor. 
Well, Gail Kettle and I were assistant coaches at Davidson College under Lefty Drizel, who has a team on the bubble. Yeah. Speaking of bubble teams, uh, they won the regular season championship in the Colonial, and they ended up losing in the championship game. And, of course, they're concerned about whether or not they're going to get in after playing a tough out-of-conference schedule. I think both of these two teams should be in. Tracy Shelton hit a three, and I think in all likelihood they both will be in. Gail Kettle, Clark, that West Virginia was in no matter what happened here tonight. John Calipari agreed with that. He thinks the Mountaineers are in here or lose. Well, I've coached a lot of bubble teams, and if you say that with a lot of confidence that you're hoping for one more win, that's all you keep saying. Let's just win one more, guys, and let's make sure as soon as they win that one, you say, okay, guys, let's win one more. Well, obviously, West Virginia will be cheering for the conference tournament favorites to win in the conferences we have yet to play their championship game. Anton Brown, short from three-point range, rebounded by Wilson. It's a 16-point game. Parker Williams stepped in the line. A great hustling play to get a hand on that pass. Three and a half minutes to play. Massachusetts on its way to the Atlantic 10 Tournament Championship. Surprise, not much of a surprise here. We mentioned West Virginia, the only team, opposing team to win here at the cage this season, but Gail Catlett felt that they really caught Massachusetts on a rare flat night. They were coming off the big win over Oklahoma and coming off going into the AP poll top 25 for the first time in the history of the school. And that probably was a good time to catch them. Just a little bit overconfident, still celebrating the win over Oklahoma. But West Virginia played well to win that game here. Oh, tried to slam the follow, but missed. 16-point game, as close as West Virginia's been in quite a while. Wilson lost it. West Virginia will retain it. This is a charming building. And they've packed over 4,500 fans in here tonight. They've played the well over capacity on average for the season. But perhaps next year they'll move into the new William D. Mullins Memorial Center, a 9,600-seat arena that they're building just down the street, scheduled to open in the fall of 93. But because of the economy in Massachusetts that is really struggling, they've been able to get extra construction crews working on that building, and they could play in that arena next year. Well, they'd love to have it for that opening game, and that's probably the only thing that John Calipari doesn't have here right now is that kind of facility. This is a great atmosphere in the cage here, but it's not what attracts the, the top flight student athletes. He's got a great location. He loves the school. His name is mentioned for a lot of jobs around the country, but I'd be very surprised to see him leave now that he's got this new arena. John's wife and daughters like it here very much, and uh, he is one of those names that always pops up because of the incredible success that he's had here at UMass. A miss by Leonard. It's batted out to Brown. Has McCoy on his right. Pulls up, and that was deflected by Boyd. It's particularly amazing when you think that it was only a bit more than a decade ago. There's Wilson in and out, followed by Robinson. Missing, rebounded by Barbie. But it was just more than a decade ago that UMass basketball had back-to-back -back seasons of 2-24 and 24 and 3-24. and 24. That was in the 79-80 and 80-81 seasons. That is not really that long ago. And They've come a long way to all of these firsts this season. They beat Temple for the first time ever in more than 20 tries. They beat Rutgers at Rutgers for the first time ever. Won the regular season Atlantic 10 championship for the first time. Got into the top 25 for the first time, and they're about to win their first ever Atlantic 10 tournament championship. This man deserves a ton of credit. Well, he has done a marvelous job not only of recruiting outstanding players, but players that fit together very well. He's created a family atmosphere. 
Uh, they are very concerned about each other. They're very concerned about winning, and they're very focused on what they have to do. And he's still coaching, even though his team definitely has his game in hand. West Virginia doesn't get on national television very much either. It's a shame that it was this kind of a game for them tonight because Dale Catlett has very quietly had almost astounding success when you look at his track record at West Virginia. He's never had a losing season. He's won 20 or more in nine of his 14 years at West Virginia. They've been to the A-10 tournament final seven times. That's a two for Leonard, and they get the quick timeout, so he continues to coach, even though the game is seemingly out of hand. The lead has been narrowed to 14 and still 219 to play here in Amherst, Massachusetts. Is business travel a real problem for you and your company? I'm sorry, sir. We can't find your reservation. Our secretary said... This treasurer's report shows me that our business travel is out of control. Now, what are we going to do about it? Maybe we should get a new travel agency. What we really need is a travel management. of this game goes on to face the Georgetown Hoys 55 to 50 is the score five with 12 14 left in the first half 219 remaining in the game well, I've got a lot of respect for this Mountaineer team because they have not given up they've continued to play smart basketball and continue to play hard we mentioned a moment ago the astounding success of Gail Catlett. Never had a losing season in 20 years as a coach. His overall record that you see at the top is at West Virginia only, including his six years at Cincinnati. He has 412 career wins and just 187 losses. Nine 20 win seasons or more at West Virginia in 14 years. He's been in nine NCAA tournaments, five NITs in his 19 previous years as a head coach. He's a graduate of West Virginia. 1963, played for Fred Schaus, who went on to be the athletic director. Leonard stepped on the line. He asked Murph Shapiro if he was pushed out. But the answer was not to his satisfaction. Gail Catlett thinks he was pushed out. Well, again, great hustle by West Virginia in a situation where, again, it would have been very easy for them to let up and just go ahead home with the loss. Foul called against Pervarius Green. His third. Coming up next, Sports Center with Chris Berman and Mike Tirico. Among the stories they'll be covering, the Indiana Hoosiers run for the Big Ten title. They're hosting Wisconsin. The conference tournaments are in full force around the country. And the Mets get good news about Dwight Gooden. Gooden pitched in a simulated game today, and Chris and Mike will tell you how that went. Anton Brown trying to become the fifth UMass Minutemen to reach double figures tonight. He needs this one. UMass came into this one with all five starters averaging in double figures. Tonight they have 17 from Rowe, 16 from Harper Williams, 15 from Barbie, and 10 each from McCoy and Brown. That's a three for Lawrence Pollard, and Gail Catlett gets another quick timeout. And all of a sudden, 12 points, and this game's not over. A couple of more three-pointers that could get very, very interesting. 156 to play. Don't go away just yet. like a beer cuz it should cuz it's brewed like a beer of course
against Arizona State. Yemin Sanders with the miss, but Harold Miner with the big follow. George Ravelings Club is up 10 in the second half. Back to Sean and Terry. Be interesting to see where USC is seated in the NCAA tournament. They've had a, an excellent year. George Ravelings is doing a marvelous job of building that program piece by piece, and he's now got a very well in him. I think last year there was some speculation about whether or not he'd get a new contract. The foul was on Pollard, and he has just fouled out. Speaking of the Pac-10, coming up following Sports Center at 11:30 Eastern Time, we have Arizona and UCLA for you from Poly Pavilion. Just when you think it can't get any better on Championship Week, it does. Oh, it always. It, you're always going to have some great games, some games that surprise you, as well as some players that you haven't heard a lot about that you get a chance to see and say, "Wow, these guys are really good," and that's what we're seeing tonight. Jim McCoy with 11. The lead is 14 for Massachusetts with a minute 40 to play. Well, this is McCoy's 123rd game, and he has been in double figures all but nine of those games. Another three and another timeout. Chris Leonard all of a sudden is 12, and the lead has dwindled to 11. 90 to 79, still a minute and a half to play. Well, West Virginia has done an excellent job of just being patient. They have fouled, but they haven't just gone out and taken intentional fouls and automatically put them on the line. They've given them a chance, to, given themselves a chance to come up with a steal. Then if they don't, then they go for the foul. I think they're doing a great job here. And again, the three-point shot makes such a difference, Sean. A couple of those, and all of a sudden it's five. It's a lot tougher to go to the free throw line with a seven or eight-point lead than it is with a double-figure lead. Were it not for that 20 to 2 run by UMass in the middle of the first half, this might be a completely different story. And it's a little bit problematic this year when you look back at it for West Virginia. Prolonged droughts. They were able to survive the one against Temple in the semifinals. They couldn't quite overcome it in the game against Massachusetts at Morgantown. And unless they continue to knock well, down these three pointers quickly, they're not going to be able to overcome it tonight. Well, they depend on the three point shot a lot. You see, they take a lot of them. Chris Leonard has already taken over 200 this year. And when you shoot from outside, you are going to have spells when the ball just doesn't go in the basket for you. Now, by the same token, Massachusetts doesn't take many three-pointers. During the course of the season, they've only taken 269. Well, Chris Leonard's taken 202 by himself. So that gives you an idea. This team has five double-figure scores. They don't see many scoring drops because they have a lot of different ways to hurt you. Full court pressure. And a timeout called by Tony Barbie as he was trapped by Green and Leonard. Again, we remind you that Sports Center follows the Atlantic 10 championship game with Chris Berman and Mike Tirico. That's a minute 26 seconds away, but it could be a while the way West Virginia is using the clock. And again, there are the stories. Indiana's run for the Big Ten title, battling Ohio State for that honor. The tournament's in full force, the ACC and Big East among those getting underway tonight. The ACC semifinals come your way on Saturday here on ESPN. 1.30 and 3.30, the start times of the two games. And then the championship game of the Midwestern Collegiate Conference at 5.30, followed by the Great Midwest from Chicago at 7.30. Lowack at 9.30. Terry Holland will be there for that one. And the Big Sky rounds it out at midnight. Now, if you are a college basketball fan, where else do you want to be on Saturday but in front of your TV set staring at ESPN? That's fantastic. I'm just sorry I'm not going to be able to see all those games because I'm going to have to do the one in the whack. No timeouts left for West Virginia. Now, that last trap of West Virginia was exactly what you want to do in a situation. Give the inbounds pass, make it tough on them to get it in, shove them up as close as you can to the baseline and the sideline, get a good trap, and don't let it come out. If you have to, foul, but don't let the ball come out of the trap. And a tough time getting out of the backcourt. Vernon was fouled by Shelton. 
Well, a good job by Massachusetts of moving the basketball, though. West Virginia couldn't get to them to set the trap. And again, they want to go for the steal first and the foul secondly. And I like that idea, rather than just taking the foul. You see a lot of teams, that they throw the ball in, they take the foul immediately. West Virginia plays for the steal and then the foul. Bill Wilson goes to the bench. Herndon to the line, following the fourth foul on Tracy Shelton. The biggest lead for UMass was 26 points. They had that twice. It's 11 at the moment. And still 11. And UMass is conceding the rebound here to West Virginia on a miss with no players along the lane. West Virginia's got their three-point shooters down court. They're going to try to rush it down to them. They'll have them spotted up on each side of the floor. Herndon missed two. Boyd lays it in. It's down to nine. No timeouts left for the Mountaineers. They need a quick foul, and they get it as Leonard attacked Jim McCoy. A little bit too aggressive here in that particular trap. Uh, again, I, I think Catlett would like to see him go ahead and trap, go for the steal first, and not just automatically take the foul. That was a little quick on the foul that time. And it was the fourth against Leonard. Oh, and a situation that will continue to call for quick following for Gail Catlett. Leonard can't afford to take another one because they need him in there to shoot these threes if they're going to continue to come back. See Gail Catlett creating a timeout. He didn't have a timeout, but he got his team over on the sideline and created one for himself. The lead is 10. With 1-10 to play. And now Coach Calipari thumbed Harper Williams out of the lane, but he did leave Will Herndon. 14 points for Jim McCoy. No call as Boyd brushed McCoy. They need a quick shot here. Shelton steps back for three. Rebounded by Williams. One minute to play. They move it quickly up to McCoy. It was a two-on-one, but time more important now, and UMass runs the clock. Well, that should do it. It's tough for West Virginia to make up this much in the time that they've got left. And the crowd is starting to celebrate a little bit, but John Calipari is making sure that his players are focusing on what they have left to do. He doesn't want any celebration on the court yet. Most of the students at the University of Massachusetts obviously are from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. These are very tough times in the Commonwealth. And this is a lift, not only to the students, but people throughout the state, in a state that needs a lift. Now, we've got a sign over there in the student section that says, we want Duke. They all want Duke. And you notice during championship week, every one of uh, the victors in these conference championships has a sign, we want Duke. Not any of them that have played Duke. <laughs> no, I was going to say, it does not speak really for the quality of the education at some of these institutions. Boyd lays it in. You've never seen that in the stands where the teams have already played Duke <laughs> once this season. They don't want to see Duke again if they never have to. Leonard has fouled out. There was a play earlier that created a lot of respect for Chris Leonard in my mind. He's had a terrible game in terms of scoring. He's expected to carry a lot of the scoring load. He missed a shot and hustled down court like crazy to make a play at a time when it seemed like the game was totally out of reach. Now, I really admire that on a player because it's easy to get your head down and you hustle, but you don't quite give everything you've got. He was absolutely given everything that he had. I'm about to duck under the table, Terry, because we are about to get run over in 35 seconds. UMass about to go to the NCAA tournament for the first time in 30 years. Robinson scores for the Mountaineers. Great hustle by Boyd. We didn't expect to get run over from this side. I was going to say, we're going to get it from both sides, <laughs> it looks like, Sean. And Boyd came perilously close to our location. The people behind us weren't happy with us being here. Normally, these tables are not here on this side of the floor. They, they commented quite a bit that we should keep our heads down. Boyd laid it in. The lead is back down to nine, but only 20 seconds remaining and no timeouts for the Mountaineers. They try to foul, and they do. Green grabbed a hold of McCoy with 16 seconds left.
Jim McCoy is a little hard to figure out. He only shoots in the low 60s from the free throw line. He shoots in the low 40s from the field. He doesn't shoot three-pointers, yet he manages to put points on the board. And he is uh, definitely a factor, not only in terms of scoring himself, but in creating opportunities for other players on his team. That's what John Calcari said today. He's not a shooter, but he's a great scorer. The all-time leading scorer by far at UMass. The only UMass player over 2,000 points. He started the night with 2306. And to show you how much his teammates appreciate him, when Harper Williams was awarded the MVP in terms of the league this year, he passed it on to Jim McCoy. He said he's the one that really deserves it. That was a touching moment at the Atlantic 10 award ceremony in Philadelphia. And Williams was announced as the player of the year. He called McCoy up, handed him the trophy, and said, I wouldn't have the success without you. It's yours. The final 10 seconds. Now five seconds left. And it'll be West Virginia ball. UMass. wins both the regular season and tournament championship in the Atlantic 10. We invite you to stay tuned for Sports Center coming up next.